Good evening, race fans. Welcome in to race 11 of 13 here this evening, the YJ Media 200 here at Martinsville Speedway. As always, here with my co-commentator, Art. How are we doing tonight? Hey, I want you to know that is October ARS Super Saturday Champion Art. Thank you very much, and I'm doing great. Yeah, check out twitch.tv slash raceaffinity on Saturdays for more ARS actions, Super Speedway chaos. But tonight, it's all about the chase for the ARS Season 2 Next Gen Championship. And to get through it, these drivers will have to face a big test tonight. 200 laps at Martinsville. Fuel run did not update like we told it to. It's around 88 to 99 laps. Did not update properly. Um, but that's the estimated fuel run for a 200-lap race. They're looking at a two-stop race. Five sets of tires is correct. Zero fast repairs. And three green-white checkers to settle it if need be. Go ahead and get out onto the on-track action as qualifying is underway. We have a season debut taking place here tonight. Zach Range in the 043 machine. Off on his first lap. The Mercedes paint scheme. Ooh, we might have to do a, another server, actually. Why is that? I'm getting confirmation from uh, race control that the time might be messed up. Interesting. Thing could be on hold here. Hard to find out, but nevertheless, we'll cover it as if it's going on. Here's Jarrett Talmadge, one of the playoff contenders. The 91 machine. He has a blazing fast first sector. Best of anyone so far. Can he put together the second half of the lap? It's going to be the 1933. Talmadge not able to do so in the second sector. Enough for third quickest. The one that can beat it now is Andrew Tennell. 20.97 on his first lap and second lap into Ooh. the wall. That's not how you rush fast, ain't it? Absolutely not. No confirmation, but there was apparently a mess up. We will be going forward with this one for now, at least. Tentatively, it is Brandon Bowers on pole. He's your championship leader entering tonight. Taking another crucial step forward. Track position at Martinsville going to be very important. Take a look at your championship standings as they enter tonight. Three races left, including this one. Here's how it shakes out at the top of the championship table. And in Bowers over his teammate, James Jimmy Fillers, by five points. Thomas Green also in a tie for second. Dylan Felvich right there. Sartaj Mann falling back after problems last week. Still on the hunt, and then back down to Randy Arms, Justin Johnson. Here at Talmadge, Alex Chira, Kyle Ritchie. And Ryan Tiller they need big nights tonight to get back into the championship hunt with only two races left after this one. Looks like we're going to go ahead and be racing. Server <laughs> was moved up by five minutes. So I think everything's good otherwise. We are moving to a different server. Never mind. <laughs> uh, it'll be a 15-minute practice, uh, regular qualifying. Fair enough. And then we'll start. All right. So, like Jonathan Dolly grids up, he's the winner of this unofficial race. I mean, that's got to be Bowers for, you know, getting pole. Maybe. Good thing, because there we go then. So we will wait for drivers to grid up. The next session, and we'll be ready to race. All right, your thoughts on what to expect here tonight from Martinsville? I would say... I, I want to say chaos because that is just like the Martinsville way, but I feel like it's going to be one of those sneaky ones where we might get a couple early on, 
but I feel like they know each other well enough to not just start, you know, running each other over. We'll have to see. We have a couple guys at the back that are going to have to be making their way up. Looks like Thomas Green didn't get a lap in in the first session. We'll see how they elect to navigate it in the second server. Here is the pace car. All on his lonesome. Pace car is about to win this race. <laughs> we'll just follow the pace car until, uh, until the next session is open. It is. All right. Then we'll move off from this one. A very interesting. Set it's up. I don't see nothing. I mean, I'm currently loading into it, brother. Fine. Fine. There it is. All right. It's gonna be interesting when someone doesn't get the memo. Hopefully everybody does, but... I'm curious, how many laps will this pace car do if there's no one to put up behind it? That is a genuinely, like, now intriguing well, question. Oh, there it is. Never mind. So it does do the two pace laps. That's not as fun as I thought it would be. Nah, it's kind of a letdown, actually, all things considered. <laughs> it's just very anticlimactic. Oh, but there's Travis De Leon. <laughs> in his box, he goes, you go out and do a lap and just call himself the winner. <laughs> that's what I would do. 100% that's what I would do. But uh, nevertheless, I don't think he's going back out of it. Be right back. I sure the guys who saved it from for Mega Man Champions. Alright, what'd you say? <laughs> I, just, I just realized the guys who saved at the pump are back to back champions. <laughs> Don't stop. stop it. We are back though. We're gonna have, I think, 10 minutes of practice covered. Everyone gets the same amount of time, so it's fair, and they're just came to plenty looping it. Jarrett Talmudge says thank you very much. We just needed an all green flag ARS race, right? Give them moon car rules. Just go around Martinsville. Hope for the best. Uh, we will be advancing in the session in the next four minutes. But here's the practice times as it stands. It just shows him as pitting. That's Yeah, 
Even the ARS stuff was scheduled at 8.30, <laughs> except for the session. Everything looks to be good to go now. If you're just tuning in, we uh, tried to launch the race 10 minutes early. Here's the race information again from the YJ Media 200, sponsored by our very own Corbin Simmons. Two laps of qualifying, 200 laps, 55% of capacity for an estimated fuel line of 88 to laps, five tire sets, one starter set, four in the pits, zero fashion pairs. You might check your settle it. Quick reminder here are the championship standings as they came into tonight. Josh and Quiggin has relinquished his spot in the playoffs, so there was only 11 of us down to Ryan Tiller. We're fighting for the championship. Three races remaining. It's Brandon Bowers for his teammate. Five points and Thomas Green failed at Shark Tide being all in the hunt. It's sure to be an exciting 200 laps here tonight. It's any race in the Xfinity race, we're going to be in for a special treat. Numerous reasons. You were talking about the race from past weekend, and I'm like, the Xfinity race was actually not that bad. Xfinity marked the race for all yeah. sorts of chaos. Give me that old Xfinity Martinsville race. Give me Ty Gibbs dumping his teammate. There we go. Other problems are solved. Proud of you. There it is. There's There's going to be a long race, 200 laps, especially if it can block them up quickly. Just don't throw the caution, Corbin. Like, you, you don't legally have to. <laughs> this could be a green flag race if the caution just doesn't come out. three all in a league of his own he will be getting the EOL obviously as a next up driver Kyle Ritchie, Jarrett Talmadge they need big nights just with a good lap time the practice shenanigans are underway but I'm looking forward to some short track racing here it's been a while since we've had one on the schedule. I guess you can count North Wilkesboro as one, but that was a non-points event, and Cade McClenney won that. Now the, the hail melons are occurring, so these lap times maybe not representative of what they can actually do, as they have advanced the session to qualifying. Can Bowers go back-to-back? Back? But we were at Richmond... Back all the way back at week four, and Brandon Bowers won that race. But let's go ahead and see here qualifying underway. First man out looks to be Scarebo. In the 59 machine. And he's someone that knows how to take care of his equipment, might not have the most top end speed, but he takes care of his stuff. And that's going to be important at a place like Martinsville. As he sets off, he'll have the first lap time set. He crosses the line. His first lap will be a 19.85. It should be quicker on the second lap. Kyle Ritchie has lap times filter in, and he's only going to do the one lap. Interesting choice. Let's go on board here with Cade McClenney. 
He maxes out third gear, not even getting to fourth gear here with the gear ratio in these next-gen cars. That is a sight to see. A little bit loose out of turn two. And he's going to abort this lap, and he's going to try and build the momentum all here for lap number two. As Kyle Ritchie, top of the board, 19.47. Careful to stay off of the curb so you don't get shot up the racetrack. Chris Pinder goes four, so that practice time was representative. At least at the moment. Dolly slots into eighth. Tillers goes six on his second lap. And then at the line, Cabe McClenney. His lap time did not register. Just, he doesn't even get the I didn't EOL. see him hit anything. But he gets the EOL anyway, so it doesn't quite matter. Alex Chira goes P5. Belvich in 6. Sartaj, man, he needs a big bounce back. He got wrecked out of last week's race. Halting all his momentum for the regular season champion. Coming across the line here to complete lap number 1. Twenty-seven machine goes into the thirteenth position, but washes up in turn number one, and that'll be his qualifying effort done. He'll start mid-pack. Let's go to Thomas Green in the thirteen machine. Crosses the line, goes P four. Michael McElroy out on his lap. Going to the line to start his first lap. Brandon Bowers is currently the last of the qualifiers. He Sydney. has another lap if he wants it. But it doesn't look like he wants it. No. Yeah. Oh, and Mikel, we're going to loop it around. As Jarrett Talmadge off out of four to start his first lap. Down the back straight away. Looks like he hits the bottom pretty nice here. Car rotates to the center of the corner. Gas it up. Don't get loose. It looks nice and tidy. It's good enough for P3. Absolutely a great lap for this 91 machine. Anybody else? Looks like Justin Johnson just completed his lap. Good enough for only 16th. And Brandon Bowers did come back out, but he is 20th of 20th, and Nick Miller right at the death. Going to try and steal pole from Kyle Ritchie, 19.47, the time to beat. Let's go on board with the driver of the number 19 machine. Keep it off the curbs. Nice straight line exit. Big bobble out of two, and he's going to have to hit it all on his second lap. So he abandons the first lap, gets a good run off of four. I don't know if he'll have time to finish the lap. Doesn't look like it. What he does is get a lap on the board to start 21st at worst. And he's gonna run out of time through three and four. And that'll be qualifying. He's sitting down there with Bowers, the only two, you know, in the 20s, honestly. So this will be an interesting one to see how they kind of work their way up through the field. And obviously, we got uh, Cabe McClenney, and then Jonathan Schwartz has shown speed this year as well. A couple of the next up guys back there. So we'll see how they make their way through this field. Bowers has a lot more to lose than someone like Nick Miller does or Cade McClenney. And then, obviously, Zach Range making his season debut from the Next Up series. Chad Adams making his third start. A brilliant lap from Kyle Ritchie gets him the pole. Where's Corbin when you need him to set over-unders on the number of cautions? No idea, but again, if you're just tuning in, this is the first time you've seen the ARS Next Gen Playoffs. Drivers highlighted in purple at the top of your screen on the ticker are the playoff drivers. 
with three races remaining in the season. It's uh, just a five-race sprint. 28 drivers. We'll see if they all grid up. And then, as always, our partnership with the Innocent Lives Foundation. You can check out the link here to learn more information and to donate to an absolutely amazing cause. As we are, I think, almost at 85% of the season-long goal, which is absolutely incredible. Would love to cross the finish line for that within the last handful of weeks. As we get ready for 200 laps at the world's you, fastest paperclip. Do you want to make you know, picks to win? Picks to win. Getting down into the crunch time. Oh man, with the mixed up grid order, we got guys at the way at the back. It's a long race, but at the same time, it'll go by so quick with 19, 20 second lap times. Give me. I mean, Thomas Green, he's turned up the heat a lot. So once the playoffs start, I think he'll get it done here from P5. I'm going to do it because he randomly messaged me and was like, pick me Monday. So y'all are going to want to pick me Monday. I'm picking Caleb McClenny. Oh, we've had an incident here on the warm-up lap. Why did I say Caleb? It's Cave. That's wild. What happened? Oh, no. Oh, and the 24 loops it around. As does Joshua Parent in the 22. My goodness. As they were trying to catch the field. And that will add a lap to the pacing. That is... You see the tire marks? Yeah, so we've seen this a lot at Martinsville. Turn 4, just coming off of it, it gets very loose in the back end. Very easy to come around. They were given the... Next up drivers there... EOLs and that kind of put them way back behind the eight ball and they had to uh, catch the field and push a little bit too hard and turn three and four on cold tires but now the lights are off on top of the pace car Kyle Ritchie on pole Randy Arms to his outside what do we have down into turn number one I'm assuming it can be nothing but fun remind me who you picked to win again Cabe McClinney Cabe McClinney there you go we enter the Geico Restart Zone. Kyle Ritchie gets us underway, but Randy Arms with a great jump. He'll be right there into turn number one. Nice and easy, hopefully. And the eight powered up off the outside. Not quite. Everyone looks like they make it through for now. I don't see any three-line shenanigans. No one forced it where they don't have to. Looks like Kyle right. Ritchie half a car length ahead, but Randy fighting hard on the outside, trying to get that momentum off of the corner but he goes in a little bit too deep the 76 will clear off the corner you see a lot of side by side and guys trying to get in line the outside line does works eventually but it does take oh, some time to come in sideways. oh a big stack up in the back brandon french down on the inside lets the field go by but it looks like we're all good single file all the way back down to fillers and then side by side back behind them, Devin Galvin and Chris Pinder. Who had a great qualifying effort, but he's already down three positions. Devin Galvin up three positions. If he can make this move around the outside work, Casey Brown way up top. That opens the door for Sartage Mann in the 27. It's just a textbook Martinsville pass there by Sartaj. You roll the center in the corner a little bit better than the car on your outside. And if they hit the wall off of two, that helps just a little bit as well. Oh, there's Samuel Demian. He's loose. But he gathers it up. He has a spot to drop into. And will stay green. Good save by the 21. Rear tires don't appreciate it. And that'll put him under some pressure from Chris Pinder. Ooh, 
Bowers is loose. Also able to gather it up and keep on going, but... Jonathan Dolly coming right with Pinder. 21 starting to drop back on those hot tires. Nick Miller, he's already up five spots. He just got around Casey Brown there at a two. Casey Ooh, trying to out. brave it around the outside. It's caution out there. Brandon French, Samuel Demian around as well. This turn number four as the field slows up to avoid it. Let's take a look here. French off of two. And he just loops it. And he's completely stuck. And here come the leaders. And you have to throw the caution. It wasn't three cars. Maybe ask. He probably should have towed. And Dim Yin goes around. Good efforts for everyone else to avoid him. Let's take a look here at what happened to Dem Yin again. As Pinder goes around even after that as well. So a couple cars trying to avoid the aftermath. And Dolly checks up. 21 slams on the brakes, spins it out. But what happened to Chris Pinder? I, he also like did the same thing. He got loose trying to avoid it. Uh, that was a little bit after the fact. Oh, and he just goes way up out of the hill. And he just gets up in the dirty stuff and does a slow little spin dolly into him. Tennell, Justin Johnson, Devin Galvin, they all go by. So that was an interesting one. Even as light as that hit from dolly was, like, I would be terrified that that's a tough link. Right. You're not really worried about engine power here, aerodynamics, whatever. You but just the car does need to be able to turn. Yeah, you just hope the tow link is intact because, you know, 90 degree turns almost. Two hairpins. You need a working tow link, but an interesting first caution of the night. No major damage, just a kind of an inconvenience. Looks like French will get the laps back. Not sure what that's about. Bowers is coming in. Big mover currently is Nick Miller. He's up five spots since the start, as is William Bowman. And a Fanta paint scheme looking good. Unchanged in the top three, though. I wonder how long that'll last before someone, you know, makes a big old move trying to move forward. Yeah, already 11 laps into this thing, so the under green, these laps do tick away. So if we can get green flag pit stops, you're going to want to be sure to execute on those. That's uh, going to be a big potential to make up time. The track position is vital here, so every spot is a premium. And Sure enough, on the restarts, the best way to make up spots, so we'll see some chaos on these restarts, and Kyle Ritchie takes the outside line this time. As the pole sitter gets lane choice, and this will be an interesting decision, but looks like he'll fire off early and hope to get clear into turn number one. And that's exactly what he does. Ooh, checking up mid tag. three wide. Shorts aggressive into one. Casey Brown, Nick Miller, three wide. Around goes the 21 again. Big kerfuffle, and the yellow is back out again. As that was four and five wide, Casey Brown around, Samuel Demian around. Take your pick. Let's see here what happened. The 21, I think, was the first car to go around and kind of create the track blocker. Is there Zach Range nowhere to go? Michael McElroy nowhere to go? Casey Brown facing the wrong way on a racetrack. I think Damien doesn't realize how close he is to that car up on her own. But this was started by Failvich. Um, he did not get a good restart. You'll see it here as we go forward a couple cars. I go forward. And. 
it actually is kind of starting. The the 13 doesn't go. Kyle Ritchie has a great start. He did nothing wrong. He goes in the restart zone. But that kind of backs up the 13 a little bit, and that backs up the 23, who backs up the 88 into the wall. Dolly, and, and they all scatter from there. Demian comes in hot, gets pinned. And he's going to get spun by the 33, little half spun. And there's just really nowhere to go for wide at Martinsville. All the guys trying to avoid it. But yeah, poor Demian, nowhere for him to go. He gets a good start here. And he's trying to avoid the chaos ahead of him. Gets a little deep into the breaking zone, punts the 17. Turns down onto the 33, comes back up, and collects his teammate, who they meet in the middle, Zach Range. Looks like Chad Adams, a slight little bit of contact there, but other than that, all good. Things happen fast at Martinsville, that's definitely case in point right there. Another question asked. How many times do you think that's just short track racing will be said in chat? <laughs> like, in the race chat? Yeah. Because I, I, I've got a feeling it's probably already happened. Right. Yeah, but that was an interesting one, though. That was a couple rows back, kind of an accordion effect, and then they all just kind of absorbed together. They were four wide off of two, and that was just never going to work. Casey Brown just barely stays on the lead lap, and Demian's got to get on his horse here if he wants to join him. I think he'll get out in time. He does beat the pace car out, so all 28 cars still on the lead lap. Big tough breaks for both of these guys. They started in the top half of the field. Now they're second to last and last only after 18 laps. So pace car is off. Kyle Ritchie again takes the outside, so expect him to time his jump well, and we'll see if the 91 gets a better start here. But he waits. He keeps him pretty late in that restart zone and kind of catches him napping, and he's clear down into turn number one. Looked a little cleaner throughout, though. No big checkups. He's playing the game perfectly right now as we're a little slow. Further back in the field, I believe that was Bowman in the Fanta Ooh, car. 27, he went real hot in the 3 and 4. He's still trying to Look at that, 4 wide for about half a second on the exit. There goes Chad Adams. He's loose out of 4. Can he get it gathered back up? Yes. But Cabe McClenny was stuck, and just take a look at all of this chaos on the exit of turn number 4 here. I think that was the wrong replay, but nevertheless, we'll have to go back and take a look at that somehow, some way. We head back to the live action. A lot of single file. Wide. Back here with Samuel and Demian. They were three wide for a second. It is not chilling out here in the back. Or maybe it has a little bit. I mean, Nick Miller's still pushing the issue, but he's got to get forward. He's already up six spots. Joshua Parent is up 11. Parent made out like a bandit with Sir Taj Man. Just, I mean, he was full locked up into the corner sideways. I saw that a couple times from him in practice. Looks like he just gets too deep into the braking zone or his brake bias isn't to his liking. But it's going to be tough to generate runs just because of how short the front and back straightaway is. So you have to be good through the corners here. That's where you make up most of your time and getting that run off. We're side by side here for the 14th position. These are teammates from Tri Racial Racing. 19 and the 27. 27's racing for a championship with the 19. Obviously faster at this early part of the race, so. No sense in holding each other up at the moment. Another pair of teammates. Joshua Parent, Devin Galvin, the 22 locks up. He'll lose one spot and maybe two as Galvin's losing a handful. And just behind him, Justin Johnson picking up the scraps from Tenold's mishap out of the exit of turn number two. Ooh, I think Chad Adams had another incident here. 
Oh no, it was French. French looped it. He's well, back half going. Spin and, yeah. Let's take a look here. He just puts too much break into it and round he goes. Casey Brown looks like he might have a similar thing happen here. Well, he was all the way around though. He, he, he the hits curves. the curb on exit. Around he goes. And Brandon French again stuck up on the high side. Oh, Casey Brown right into him. Caution out immediately. So here's Casey Brown. And there's French having his issue. And he just carries too much speed. And there's French just sitting there trying to get back going. And a bad day gone worse. As Failvich will pit from the seventh position. A couple guys further back get a top off for fuel here, it looks like. Don't think they need tires this early. I don't know why, but it is just so, like a little genuinely funny to see a car like stopped in the top line at Martinsville through the corner and just to have a car come flying through at it yeah it's unfortunate for french i mean he he obviously wrecked and put himself stuck there but you kind of think oh i'm stuck on the high side i might be able to get out of this okay and then casey yeah, brown casey brown who cannot get the car to turn for him yeah he just carried too much speed and around he goes they'll both be a lap down but is martinsville you can get that buffer down and obviously the five with a lot of damage but uh He's going to keep on keeping on for now, at least. Still unchanged for your top three as Demian beats the pace car out. Yeah, Drew, it's turning into a special one here tonight. I think everyone was kind of, like, anticipating this, though. They were kind of just, like, you know, uneasy about a short track. But to be a champion, you have to perform everywhere. And to be, to be fair, the top guys really haven't had any issues. We had the one restart shenanigan. Failvich didn't get through the gears, but other than that, it's been pretty squeaky clean. A couple lockups, but nothing really too major. But turn four has been calamity corner here at Martinsville for years, just for whatever reason, just loose in and out of the corner. And it's proven to be that again tonight. Looks like we'll have a couple cars going a lap down here. Casey Brown, William Bowman. Failvich puts himself a lap down. He was on pit road for over a minute. And he pitted from 7th, so unless... don't remember him having any issues. Maybe he had to attend to something or was fixing a, an issue with the wheel, maybe. But he's going to be back here in the Hornets' nest and have to fight for a lucky dog. And he'll be battling it out with Casey Brown and William Bowman. Brandon French is 2 down. Or three down now. He just got passed again. We're coming back to the green flag. It's Kyle Ritchie again taking the outside. Pace car is off. There's a big... Oh, wait. Thomas, Green had, like, Thomas Green's There's blinking a... out. But say, Tiller, close up a little bit for us, but... <laughs> yeah. Here comes the 76. Enters the guy could restart zone, and he is gone. No one's been able to match his restart going. yet. Oh, we're getting a little bumpy into the one. Yeah, that chain reaction, you can kind of tell some guys don't launch as well. And that is leading to the chain reaction down into turn number one, but... Looks like Thomas Green was able to take advantage. Talmadge now outside the top three for the first time tonight. Teammates swapping places. There's a lot going on in the back. Almost three wide here for a moment. 21 smokes it on the entry. And he'll lose three spots. Ooh, Bowers. Oh, Bowers is around. Wow. Tailed into him. And they somehow hang on to it. Back here for 20th. You never know what to expect. And there goes Ooh, Casey Brown, Brown again. Chad Travis De Leon, your championship leaders in the inside wall. Bowers was doing everything to not, like, wreck there. 
and just everyone wrecked around him. <laughs> yeah. Is that a toe link for your championship leader? Oh, and it does not look good. It is to the right. Major championship implications. He's coming right into the pits. And it is broken. My goodness. Let's take a look. Casey Brown breaks loose and he clips Chad Adams. Chad Adams with absolutely nothing he could do there. Casey Brown breaks loose on the high side. Collects the right rear Chad Adams. The 15 of Travis DeLeon trying to take evasive maneuvers. And you just run out of room here at Martinsville. But this goes back to another half a lap. I think that is Justin Johnson and Pinder and Dolly all fighting for position. Oh, and Bowers comes up into Devin Galvin. Because De Galvin's trying to leave his teammate plenty of room. And up into him, he's loose. Tennell tries to lock it up, but back into the 11. And they're breaking for half a straightaway. And then it leads into this incident. And that's, yeah, left front and left rear. And another shot to the left rear, but I'm pretty sure it is the left front. It's the parking lot on the front stretch. That is tragic. And that blows the door wide open for fillers to take the lead here. Let's remind you what we came into tonight. How crucial that wreck might be. It was Bowers from Fillers by five points, and that has been completely blown open. Thomas Green, Felvich, Sartage Mann, Randy Arms, they all have renewed hope, even back to Jarrett Talmadge and Alex Chira. It's, it's been completely blown open with three races left to go in the season. Championship implications. And we are only 39 laps into this race. You see the the top six there, all playoff drivers. And then back to ninth and tenth, eleventh. They're all trying to pick up the scraps. Bauer is now down to dead last, trying to fix that toe link. Looks like Failvich. Still a lap down through all of that. As we head back here for the restart. I was just going to talk about Kate McKinney being the biggest mover, but Nick literally was right, right there with him. him. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the only argument Cabe would have was he gets an EOL, so his <laughs> grid spot is not his spot. And Nick Miller did not get a second qualifying time in, so he technically did qualify. And here we go again, 21 cars in the lead lap, and Kyle Ritchie, the man to beat so far. Another incredible restart. Side by side for second, Randy looks to take the spot and get clear. 91 washes up a little bit, his teammate doesn't take advantage lets him get back in line big send around the outside from Cable Bunny 19 with a little bit of contact there to the 9 of Chira and that'll lose him another spot to Cave McClenny Sartage man he's cracked the top 10 trying to resurrect his championship fight he's going to make an aggressive move here on fillers down into turn 1 does not stick. He took a very shallow angle. He's able to power off, though, but Fillers able to drive it in deep and hold the position. There's someone in the wall. Battle for the Lucky Dog goes the way of Dylan Failvich. He's in that 21st position. There goes Pinder around.
And we took a little bit, but the caution is out. And there's more chaos on the front stretch, and Fillers is involved. Here is Chris Pinder. Looks like he kind of... I don't even know if that's net code or if he just sees McElroy coming and gives up the spot. And Zach Range gets into the left rear, turns him around. And then Sartage Mann gets into the back of the 10 and just sends him around. Tiller into him, Joshua Parent into him, Damien... Breaks loose trying to avoid it. I think we'll be having some good old fashioned beef here tonight. Yeah. If I'm the Star 10, I'm just. Yeah, just kind of took him out there. Let's go I mean, on. he had the better drive off the corner, but yeah, he did not lift. Yeah, that was an interesting one. So. Oh, he's. Oh, he is unhappy. He is showing his displeasure that Fillers is big angry. Oh, yeah. Because he just got drove through. I understand it. Let's take another look here. On board. The caution is not out. And he just doesn't get a chance to, to gather it up. And he gets a big damage there. He get That might be a tow link. Let's go on board here with Sartaj. Let's back it up. That'll put fillers a lap down now. And just to confirm... Caution was not out. It was out there. So yeah, fillers got drove through right there. And just to, you know, devil's advocate, play both sides, you go on board with Sartaj Man, and he'll probably say it's a different perspective. Although, from the far chase, it's pretty clear what happens, but he'll get here and be like, well, I don't necessarily think I was on him. And, but he really didn't make a big effort to get back off of him. And that early in the race, and it's definitely going to be a championship rival the rest of the way. At least from the perspective of fillers. It's definitely questionable whenever, you know, we still have... I mean, there are two races left. Yeah, and if that puts Fillers a lap down for the rest of the race and he, he kind of puts himself out of the championship fight, then Fillers is like, all right, well, you're not winning the championship either. I mean, that you don't want to make enemies with this few races left in the season. Then you bring other guys back into it. I mean, it would be really nothing for, you know, Bowers to also get himself involved. Yeah. Especially after, you know, what has happened tonight? About a teammate. But yeah, these wrecks are, are such parking lot creators that guys keep getting trapped a lap down. Failovich is back on the lead lap. Good to see. As he actually, I don't know why he was even a lap down. He just came down and was on pit road for a minute. And uh, he hasn't really been involved in anything tonight. So Andrew Tennold one lap down. Casey Brown one lap down. Travis DeLeon, James Jimmy Fillers, William Bowman, and Joshua Parent. Brandon French is two down, and Brandon Bowers is hoping for some sort of miracle. 20 cars on the lead lap, 27 on the track. And Kyle Ritchie will get us going here again. And again, just a perfect jump for this 76. Nick Miller hard at the back of the 91. A couple of checkups further back. It is two by two. Off of turn number two, and no separation between Thomas Green and Randy Arms. Miller taking a peek on Jarrett Talmadge. Looks like he has half a car length, and he'll try and make that a whole car length down into turn number three. Does get the move done. 91 tries to fight it back. Nothing doing there. Okay, McClenny is up to fourth. Brandon Bowers does get back out on the racetrack. That's what I was about to talk about. And he is 17 laps down. So he's just hoping for some other guys to end up parking it. 
Yeah, if he got enough cautions for him to get back on the map, I would have. Oh, and there goes Schwartz. He ate the curb. Oh, Pander! Casey Wait, Brown again around. Yellow is out. And what happened to Casey Brown? It's like just checking up that Travis Daly on behind him and around he goes. He gets punted and what happened to Pinder? Uh What in where is he? What going? happened to Parent here? How about this? It is It just doesn't turn. He puts it in the wall and that almost I'm looks like a technical failure. In like I'm so confused because in chat he says 88. Come on, man. As though there's an issue with failvich, but I mean there was no contact. I get it. There were three wide, but they didn't really have. But an like he takes the spot there and I don't. The Bowers is coming out of the pits. I mean, I don't really know what the issue there is. But yeah, I don't understand that one whatsoever. I mean, he's gone. All right then. And then yeah. So yeah, just, ah, Schwartz is the one that he eats the curb here, and it kind of just spooks everyone behind him, and full lock on the brakes gets him around. Casey Brown's defense, while he has not had the best night, um, this one not necessarily on him. Gets hit in the left rear and kind of tagged there by the 15, who then gets hit by the 88. That's a very specific way to get stuck there. Um, he just puts so much rear brake in it, trying to check up, and fits perfectly in the little gap there. If we had gotten an Austin Powers here, I would have actually it, just lost my it, mind. It would have been an all-timer. <laughs> and that's Man, just... can't get his great clips. Interesting, interesting, interesting. With that... Puts Tennold back on the lead lap. 21 cars now on the lead lap. Fillers is the first car one lap down. Bowers will pick up a spot on Joshua Parent, but it doesn't mean a whole lot, but it is one more spot. Anything helps at this point, he'll at least get one. And with the way this race has been going, it probably won't be the last one. Mine was, though. Yeah, not thinking it will be. Man, you got no imagination. The top eight have not pitted yet. The rest of the guys have topped off for fuel, various damage re repairs, and potentially some tires, but we have not really had a chance to, to get a long run and pace car is off. Back. My pick to win right now. Sitting P4. Four. Kyle Ritchie field in tow once more. Another great jump, same as all the others. Again, clear down into turn number one, and just take a look we here. Mid-pack, three, three wide. wide. Three we, wide. I think Miller trying to split the middle. Short, Scarebo. Does filter down to two wide. Big send there from Zach Range. Couple cars in the wall out of four. Ooh, Justin L. Johnson's in the wall. We're three wide. He's got shipped up the track a little bit there. Miller gets shipped up the track. He's into the wall. Further back, there's the 95, the 33. Demian up the track. Oh, when he about got turned there, the 21 machine did. A little bit of brake smoke locking the tires up. And they're centimeters away from the wall. Filovic trying to get himself back into contention here. Trying to pick up the pieces. Cade McClenny now into second. Let's take a look at how he made the move. He was just working that outside. 
Him and Randy going at it. Oh, that was a bobble from Randy that allowed the 05 to get through. What kind of pressure can he put on this 76 of Kyle Ritchie? I mean, he called his shot. He was in my DM. He was like, hey, you better pick me. Ooh, the 21's going around. 21 is round. Oh, no, Fillers is going to get collected in it. And that's going to lose him the lucky dog yellow out immediately. The 21 of Samuel Demien. And he's going to get tagged. And around he goes from the 95. Scarabo nowhere to go. Filler not able to check up in time. William Bowman not able to check up in time. And so on and so forth. I think your lucky dog from that will be Brandon French. Yeah, because Bowers gets hit. Casey Brown contact made. And, yeah, that would be because he gets into Travis and... Ooh, wait, no, it might be Travis J.P. Daniel. Not Travis had an incident there. Did he? Or, no, did he? No, it was... Uh, da, 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 da. I thought he did without... Oh, no, no, he didn't. He didn't. Oh. So it should be Travis De Leon getting the lucky dog. Yeah. yeah. But unfortunate for the 21. It looks like that contact got him onto the curb, and around he went. He was kind of just on the outside looking in, though. He gets forced out by the 88. The 33 takes a spot. The 95 trying to be opportunistic and looking like a big send here and the 33 does arc the corner pretty good so the 21 has to check up not to get into him and around goes the 21 this has surely been a Martinsville race it definitely has from Max to the drivers. Stop wrecking. It would be nice. <laughs> I'm going to go make sure that message actually gets relayed. I don't think any of the drivers are probably checking Discord right now. I was told that your message was really. <laughs> I'm Damien. I will try just for you. <laughs> you know what? I have a feeling we're going green from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bold prediction. The odds are uh, plus 9,500 on no cautions the rest of the way. Put a dollar so down. The odds would be a lot higher than that. Nine, 950,000. 950,000. You put a dollar down and... Look, let me make it a parlay. <laughs> let me get greens all the way and a Jonathan Dolly win. You make me a millionaire on a dollar bet. Be a billionaire bet. <laughs> Pace cars off. Kyle Ritchie takes the bottom here, so I don't know if he thinks that McClenny has to make him force the strategy or if he just is trying something different, but nevertheless, 76 will take the bottom here. And we expect another great jump, and he will do it. He's going to bring Randy Arms right with him. Ooh, check on that outside line. Everyone able to keep it straight. We'll just kind of focus on this mid-pack until they can prove otherwise that there's not going to be any chaos. McCabe McClenny up 20 spots, and he wants one more. There goes Alex Cheer up into the wall. This is the battle for the lead. First one of the night. Cabe McClenny putting on a clinic, and he is cleared through to the lead. And he has gone last to first. It gritted him in 22nd, but he started 28th. And he has passed them all. What happened to the 9? Looks like he's just kind of out of the groove right now. Ooh, we're 3 wide, almost 4. Oh, Casey Brown, Kate, don't do it again. They are just beating and banging back here. Looks like Randy. Is that an issue with Randy Arms? 
Yes, it is. From third. Then he just... He makes the lightest contact with the 76 and around he goes. And championship's taking another twist as Cade McClinney has checked out. Half a second already. The top five have not pitted yet. Chad Adams. In his third start in the next gen series. Is the first one that pitted. Pitted on lap 36, or the first of the cars that have pitted, I should say. Got a couple Cautions guys. Cautions out. And we were just starting to get into a routine here, and I think Brandon French, that's William Bowman French, loses it under braking. What is it? Interesting one. He doesn't lose it necessarily on the entry, but it's kind of mid-corner, so that's... I'm curious on how that happened. He's still there. Okay, now he's going. I'm very curious. Let's see here. Doesn't look like anything edgy. Yeah, it's just too much speed. Just too much momentum and around it goes. So that'll be good news for Randy. He is a lap down now, I believe. Or he might just barely be the last car on the lead lap, actually. I believe he is, in fact, the last car on the okay, lead lap. Okay, so he was able to kind of hang it out. Shorts also there with him. And Justin Johnson is your lucky dog. So another playoff contender back on the lead lap. And Fillers is still stuck a lap down. So he'll be battling okay. with Casey Brown and Travis DeLeon. There's only three cars one lap down at this moment. Yeah, there was a real fight for that lucky dog. I know Casey Brown was trying to fight and make up spots to stay ahead, but it didn't matter in the end. We'll see what Cade McClain likes to do on these restarts. Kyle Ritchie was taking the outside most of the time. I love the implication that, like, of what Corbin has now done in chat, that he was just barely paying attention, but the second he heard Parlay, like his ears perked up. <laughs> parlay? Parlay? Someone said, <laughs> Someone said Parlay. Oh, what a bum. That man is a degenerate. There's a sports bet on it. He is doing it. Mm hmm. <laughs> Failvich bringing the heat. Man's bringing up candy corn. They're bringing the heat from 10th. Why are they not in chat? I gotta talk to him from that. That deserves an interview. <laughs> I told Kyle if he wins, I'll stop eating it. He just lost the lead, so uh, <laughs> very tragic. <laughs> I wanted to talk to Kyle Ritchie because he was the one just having a good old time. camera um, do we have it I didn't see it pre-race so let's see if we can pull it up I'm just here for the safety rating yeah take it easy on lap one turn one this, you know. we're coming back to the restart with uh, 21 cars on the lead lap Travis Daly on first car one lap down with Casey Brown and James Fillers McClenny will take the outsides. That seems to be the preferred line for the leaders. Can he get the good jump? Yes, he can. Oh, Chad Adams did not go. We'll just see if they can all make it through. Hey, I didn't want to say that because the website wasn't up, but now it is. Backmarkershop.com. Oh, all around goes Zach Range. That was textbook synchronization. <laughs> well done, sir. I think he'll get it back going here, but he was up inside the top 15 and on corner exit. Oh, contact is made. Let's take another look here. 
but he's down to the inside innocently enough, and he... Oh, they just kind of meet in the middle there. No big damage. He should be able to keep it rolling. He's still on the lead lap. I'm sure we'll have another caution, so he should be back into the swing of things. Fillers is your lucky dog as it stands. He desperately needs one more caution. But here's the Hornet's Nest just outside of the top 15. Randy Arms, a man on a mission, and there he goes. Oh, Caution that out. That is a deadly one. snap. Catching. Oh, McElroy. Catches league owner Michael McElroy. And Randy, he was trying to push to make up for the earlier incident, and a mistake leads to a mistake, trying to force the issue. And he just too much breaking into it, too deep into the corner. Around he goes. 100% on Mick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But he had a what good run. No. Oh. <laughs> Poor McElroy. With the white rims blinded. Uh, but what, uh, what happened to... Uh... to Cade McClellan. Oh, he passed the pace car, so you had to stop and wait on him. Okay. Um, so right what we'll, we'll, we were saying right before this, backmarkershop.com for all your Affinity Racing Series merch and uh, all this the merch for a sim racer in your life. There's some very applicable ones. Very applicable ones for tonight. So go take a look at least. You're gonna... It's very relatable to your average C-Fix Martinsville race. It's very relatable to this race. We got eye pacing. I think probably one of the uh, ones that matches tonight's race. You've got wheel damage. <laughs> yeah. Can't listen. If Kyle Ritchie sends over the files, I'm sure we could get some diecast up there. Like we got the YJ merch coming soon. You got to go check it out. Take our word for it. Backmarkershop.com. We're gonna keep saying YJ merch soon until he actually just does it. Yep. Yeah. We'll go, go take a look. Go take a look. Peer pressure, peer pressure, peer pressure. Put our stuff on your website. I already, I already grabbed my. I'm just here for the safety rating T-shirt. Because we are approaching halfway, and what is one of the races of all times? How's the fit? Gives a review. It fits uh, pretty well for me. Uh, comfortable. That's really all I can say about a t-shirt. <laughs> Man's put on that dad weight. Yeah. Trying to figure out his new size. It's in flux, but it fits well. No issues when, when ordering. None of that. Well done. 10 out of 10. 5 out of 5. 3 stars out of 3 stars. Whatever, whatever rating system you use. Metric, Imperial, I don't know. Way to sell it. I fully believe in this product. And that's a raging endorsement. You can ask my wife. I, that's, I haven't been this excited in a while. Raging endorsement. Complete. <laughs> Two out of ten ad read. <laughs> my complete and total endorsement. Don't take my word for it. <laughs> oh, man. It's Martinsville night. We're having a great time. Hey, we're doing the best we can in the booth. And our best is pretty dang good. Okay, McClenny, back to the restart here. Lap number 90. Great jump. He'll be clear into turn number one. Already beating and banging further back. Why you guys spill my secrets? Got some cars scrambling back there. Fillers is now back on the lead lap. He's sending it three wide. <laughs> oh, oh no, around goes Devin Galvin. And Devin Galvin, the 95. Let's take a look at what happens here. No, oh, and he's just. That was just wrecking for a whole corner. And he's parked it on the inside. Looks like he'll be back underway, though. He does stay on the lead lap. And Thomas Green to second. 
20 cars on the lead lap. Lucky Dog would go to Travis De Leon if this holds. Casey Brown in an absolute night to forget. Yellow is out. When it was of his own doing. And he's just too high in the marbles into Bowers, and it's just not one of those nights. There'll be some penalties handed out post-race for sure. For the five machine, unfortunately, and it's just one of those nights. Just now, Johnson in race chat with a potential t-shirt design. I heart self spinners. <laughs> Fair enough. But uh, so this is actually going to force some guys to pit here. We've had enough cautions. You don't necessarily like the 88 to lap 90 fuel run. That's out the window. Right. But some guys are going to take advantage. Actually, I know what they're doing. They're going to pit here and they're not going to pit again because the amount of cautions we've had. Um, with the amount of cautions, the trends of the race so far. You can make it to the end of the race with the amount of cautions. And that's what these guys that are pitting now are banking on. Please, Tom. please do not take a shot every time the five goes around. <laughs> oh, jeez. And Travis DeLeon does get the lucky dog. But Thomas Green and Jerry Town, which teammates haven't pitted yet. Let's go take a look at their strategy. Here with the Planet Sim Esports guys, you're at Talmadge, Thomas Green. What's the, the strategy behind uh, not pitting here? Uh, just hoping that I believe the stage is, what, a lap 100? When did we do or, stages? Or the... What? I don't remember us doing stages. That's news to me. Or not stage. Wasn't there uh huh. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Uh, but regardless, just we still have fuel, so just gonna run out as much as we can, and kind of at this point, I had to play a different kind of strategy, so just try to stay up here. I saw Nick was staying out, Jarrett was Sartage, so I figured might as well stay ahead of them and get the lead and try to see if we can get some clean air and see what we can do. You got the bonus point for leading a lap, and obviously with Bowers issues, the championship kind of blown back wide open. Um, so really, it's anyone's game with three races left, um, and track position tonight proving to be probably the most important thing. Um, that one can have, and right now you guys have that. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's kind of our thought process here is just keep the track position we've got and pit later and we'll see what goes down. Absolutely. Well, good luck the rest of the way, fellas. Thank you, man. Yep. Let's say stage breaks. That's not that's not on Monday nights, so I don't know where that came from. Um, but the teammates are going to line up on the inside here. He's going to try... Thomas Green is he's going to try to bring the 91 with him. He's going to give him like the nice little 3 2 1 go or, you know, now, and they're going to try and get the, the Planet Sim Esports 1 2 locked and loaded. As we are approaching halfway, I want to shout out some guys having a stellar night. Uh, Jonathan Dolly in the fifth position right now. Tim Yin having a nice night, recovered from an early incident. Devin Galvin, I know he was involved in a wreck, but he's sitting, running for a top 10. Zach Range was having a nice night before he got caught up in a couple of things. And probably the surprise of the night, Chad Adams was running comfortably inside the top five for a good portion before uh, hitting under that most recent caution. Well, the teammates perfectly. And that's as well executed as it possibly can be. And Gives the plan the same esports driver a 1 2. I just gotta hope that Thomas Green Internet holds up. As Dolly's making a move for fourth here. Tenold just behind him. There goes Justin Johnson around. No caution. He's trying to back it up and he's spun down to the inside. He'll get it back going. No caution. We've seen that a couple of times. Just a chain reaction there with Tenold and he had to check up and around he went. Dolly does complete the pass. How about Jonathan Dolly? Last time we were here, he was actually getting wrecked by his teammate, Andrew Tennold. And a fun piece of Tennold Galvin racing lore that they keep very deep in their minds and don't ever want to talk about again, but teammates taking each other out. And now they're fourth and tenth. Fourth and ninth as Tennold's trying to make a move around the outside. I'm watching the uh, potential development. Fillers was, for a second there, only two cars behind Sartajman. Right. He's back on the lead lap. I was just getting ready to point out 
Oh, and Randy's around. Caution is out. That. Oh, there's a little wiggle there from Tannel. I... Oh, and Chad Adams kills him after the yellow. Is there contact between Arms is, and Tennel, or is that just Is this like a Is this a netcode bubble, or does he see Tennel? Oh, it almost... Oh, I don't know. I guess we, yeah, we're going to have to go to the cockpit here. Does he see Tennel wiggle and just kind of freak himself out? It almost kind of looks like it, there was a bubble there that he gets kind of hit into. Let's see here. Fillers is right there. Tannel's going to snap loose off of four. He gathers it up, though. Let's just watch the hands. It kind of looks like there's a hit, and then all of a sudden he's just... Yeah, I don't know that that was... You know, I don't think Randy would just be randomly turning the wheel to the right. Take a look at it from this far chase angle again, and that's just a tough one to <clears throat> to kind of figure out what happened there officially. You can almost see a jiggle of the entire car right about there. There's almost like a bump. It's very minuscule. But around he goes nonetheless, and Demian into him and Chad Adams, commentator's curse, said he was doing a good job, and just nowhere for him to go. But looks like uh, Thomas Green is in, and that leaves his teammate out. You think his steering broke from that light of netcode? Because that, I mean, he... I mean, nailed the wheel to the right. That is crazy if that's the case. But uh, Jarrett Talmadge now leads a lap. Gets a bonus point. That would be wild. I, like, yeah, I don't know why he would randomly turn the car to the right. That's what I said. So I, it's something netcode related. But at the same time, he didn't have repairs like a, uh, a tow link was broken. So I guess really it was just netcode and it snapped the car around on him. So I guess, yeah, netcode causes the incident. I, c I can see the bobble on my screen enough to say that's a little bit of a netcode. But then the tow link was still intact somehow. Only one driver has not pitted. It is Jarrett Talmadge. He's gone over half the race on one tank of fuel. I feel like no one listening to this will actually care, but number one LSU women's basketball was taken down by Colorado. Why? For women's basketball, for women's college basketball, that's huge because usually, like, the number one and two teams just go undefeated all year. The talent I mean, is yeah, so much better. It's, suppose it's super team in that LSU team. Right. Corbin bet on LSU, so. <laughs> <laughs> but here is Jarrett Talmadge. He's got Jonathan Dolly behind him. Nick Miller is going to be looking to take the lead, get some track position. He's been quick all night. Talmadge is down and away. Dolly not able to take advantage. But Nick Miller's right there. He's going to give him the bump. He knows Talmadge hasn't pitted yet, and he's like, I got to get through. Here comes the peak to the inside. Not close enough yet. But he is all over the back of the 91. He does have fresher tires. 91 doing a nice job, though. As Schwartz is through to fourth. He gets around Cave McClenny and Schwartz and Dolly. A little bit of a lock up there on the left front. Keeps it somewhat under control. They're all single file. Back to Alex Chira for 10th. Couple cars getting squirrely. There are now zero cars between Fuller's and Sartog. And Jonathan Dolly's yeah. kind of getting railroaded on the outside here. He's into the wall. Just He's send it in deep. A little bit of a left front lock up there from Cave McClenny. 
I'm very curious. Does Filler start to see red, or does he realize we're past halfway? I can't really afford another incident like I had to get stuck a lap down, and what's the recovery look like? Because right now, he's looking to be pretty close to the championship lead with Bowers out of the picture. Oh, caution out. I'm going to say, this is not what Sartos wants to see. And Justin Johnson issues. He has to jump to pit road. Wait, what? And what happened here to bring out the yellow? I don't see anything. Like, Justin Johnson just pulls off to the side. Uh, go eye in the sky. I don't see anything. I'm right there with you. This is a good view at it. Where is Justin Johnson in all of this? I want to see what happened to him. Because he was running not half bad, but let's take a look. This is right before he tows. He's in his box, and he's battling away there just outside the top ten. And, oh, he snaps, and I bet there, there goes the tow link. Just that quick. So one of them classic... Uh, Corbin just yeah. being too early on the caution. Yeah, and look at the, the wheel to the right. I can't believe that light of a hit broke the tow link. But this is it. And turn four, just calamity corner again, and yeah, there it is, instantly. And it was a premature caution. I guess technically you can backdate it to the, the 33, I guess, if you want. So we'll give you that. Um, but yeah, another championship twist there. The 33 takes a big hit. And Bowers, I mean, he'll get another spot. Because I think the 33 is done. So he'll pick up one more left. spot. Yeah, so Bowers will pick up another spot. But really, there's not a lot of cars dropping due to attrition. As Schwartz is now in the lead. 19 cars on the lead lap back to Zach range and here's where you start to take a peek at some very aggressive fuel strategy because with the amount of cautions we've had the amount of saving shorts put it on 76 fillers 87 93 for tiller mcclenny alex chira thomas green 103 kyle ritchie and scarebo the fuel runs 90 laps, so if you pit on 103, you definitely think you're good with all the cautions you're getting. If you pit on 76, you need a lot of help, which you're getting. And then 93 for McClenny, 87 for Fillers, you need a little bit of help, which you're currently getting. So there's a couple guys that are kind of... It's going to be Schwartz, McClenny, Tiller, Fillers, Scarebo to watch on fuel strategy. Everybody else should be able to make it pretty comfortable. They just pitted on 113 and 90 laps. There you go. Everybody else that we just named, they're going to try something a little different. I don't even think I have enough fuel. I'm in the booth. <laughs> we had a lot of cars blink out there. That might have been me. I think that was, was me it? too. I, but yeah, we're good. That might have been I racing. <laughs> the race is past halfway. We're calling it. <laughs> but Schwartz is leading for the first time tonight. McClenny wants the lead back, though. He's got the track position again. He was able to somehow navigate all the chaos. And let's crank it up for the first time tonight. Lap 119. And there goes Pinder and Chad Adams. Yellow is out. 
Way in the back. Let's take a look here. It looks like Pinger snaps on the exit twos up in the, the dirty part of the racetrack. And not really anything Chad Adams could have done there. I mean, he just he locks it to the left front a little bit. Pinder goes wide, and early on the power, and around he goes. Chad Adams has to be one of the like unluckiest drivers here tonight. Yeah. But that should give us who will be the lucky dog recipient. It's not going to be Pinder. Is it McElroy? Yes, it is. Boss man getting back on the lead lap. Just now, Johnson going to tell the commentators, no. And then be out of the race. Yeah. Be very curious to see what happens when we get down to the nitty gritty. And let's see here. Looks like McElroy will just barely beat the pace car off. Pinder will as well. 20 cars on the lead lap. Andrew Tenold, the first and only car lap down, so he just has to not get an incident. And he'll be back on the lead lap. Randy Arms is two down and. He's starting to run out of laps. So he needs a quick caution to get Tennell back on the lead lap and then just him as the only car two laps down. Oh, is never he mind. He caught, he caught, never mind. He caught back up. He had to, he had came out of the pits. That's my bad. Pitted on. Yeah. Man can do math. So he'll be battling Tennell for the lucky dog and. With inside of 100 to go, you're probably going to want to get that. Got old Georgia public education. Mm. Brutal. There are a lot of pink cars up near the front. Well, it was just recently, you know, breast cancer aware this month, so. I imagine that's the idea behind that. Cade McClenney enters the restart zone back underway. Going to bring James Jimmy Fields with him up to third. He's trying to get inside of shorts for second. Three pink cars in a row, though. Pretty sure Schwartz and Thomas Green both run those cars full time. I think Fillers might be, though. Fillers changed. He was the original orange and uh, Little Caesars car. I think Thomas Green changed for October as well, but Schwartz does run that full time, and he'll lose two spots there for his efforts. Ooh, oh, like yellow is out. out. Devin Galvin, Travis De Leon, looks like Chad Adams again, and I think maybe Brandon Bowers. How are you gonna pipe up once during the broadcast and say don't use the laundry company? Oh, and that was oh man. So that actually was. Way further up than I thought. Yeah, it we starts with Travis and Talmadge. Oh, oh, the 15 clips the curb, and there's nothing Talmadge could have done there with, with how quick that was. And around he goes. Demien gets a piece up into the wall. Devin Galvin nowhere to go. Chain reaction. We are at very. It's a, a it's a big number. It's double digits. Whatever the over what party if we hit <laughs> you get ten cautions or get nine cautions get one pizza party free or something I don't know yeah or yeah 
nine cautions, the tenth one's free or something? I don't know. I mean, you offer pizza, I am a large man, right? Like... And Tenno does do the right thing, and he gets the lucky dog, so that's Randy all by himself, a lap down. Like, I will be telling these drivers to wreck to get a free pizza. But it's going to be like that school pizza party where it's like a slice that it's about as thick as your finger. See, but we're not in school anymore. I I'm mean, big enough I can fight for the rest of the <laughs> What are you going to do about it? you going to take it from me? No. Nope. Fair enough. So let's see here. Kay McClenney's pitted once. James Fillers four times. Thomas Green once. Dylan Felvich seven times. <laughs> Zach <laughs> Range once. five in a Dixie cup of Sprite or Pepsi. I, I do remember that. Though. If you're lucky, you get like a sucker or something, too, if you're really lucky. Or no, you get like the one-bite sugar cookie. That's right. Yeah, those. That's right. You get the pizza, the the Dixie cup, and the, the one-bite sugar cookie. And a movie. And a movie, yeah. That seemed to be how it like, always works. I do not think mayonnaise is spicy. I just think mayonnaise is disgusting. Two entirely different as, things. If it's used as anything other than a light... Why is there wrecking? Oh, no. Why do I hear wrecking? No. Bro? What's happening? I was in the middle of a statement, guys. Under caution. Yeah, I don't see anything, but I heard it. Hmm. I don't see anything. Mayonnaise is anything other than a light condiment is wrong. It's disgusting in general, even as a light condiment. That's just your opinion. I mean, yeah. It's not spicy, it's just gross. So let's see here. Pinder and McElroy beat the pace car off, so it'll still be Randy one lap down by himself. Mayo is... no, no it's not. It is not goaded. Nope. With all of this, the only two cars out of the race are Joshua Parent and Justin Johnson. That's kind of incredible. I, I want to say, uh, shock that it has taken us like 130 laps to talk about. Food. Yeah. We're kind of entering the point of delirium, or delusion. Great restart by the 05. The amount of caution is, you know, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. All hope is lost kind of moment in the broadcast. <laughs> Love the fellas, though. doing the, It's entertaining for its own reasons. But hey, they're doing their best. It they just are. Three wide, it's not gonna work! Oh, it's Fillers and Sartage again! Cheer the big loser! They can't even do anything! ALO like... is out. And Samuel Demian's around. And Randy's involved, no lucky dog for him. What happened here? Oh my god! Oh! Oh my goodness! Oh wait, wait, wait! He does. He does get the lucky dog because. It, all right. So the, just to. Okay. But right. what right. happened? So the way that the the no, the system notifies us is that if someone goes below a certain speed, they wreck, and that was just Randy slowing down for the wreck. So, in an effort to not run over his teammate. Oh my goodness! And poor branded French. There was nothing he could have done. So, Scarebo. I don't know, I wouldn't even say that's on Scarebo being conservative. The 58, just he's giving everyone in front of him a, a lot of space. It catches the 21 off guard. He thinks he has a little bit more room to break. And in an effort to not kill his teammate, he just puts so much break into it. He loops it around into the tire barriers. Kyle Larson-esque, but much more aggressive. That's got to be one of the most aggressive wrecks at Martinsville. And there goes the hood, and there it is. I just and, love the hood being back at, like, pit road entrance. And Randy getting the lucky dog. So we gain a car, we gain Randy back on the lead lap, then we lose the 21 machine, so it's give and take, and we've been about 20, 21. We really haven't got above that just due to the amount of chaos. So that means that it's Brandon French and William Bowman that are each fighting two laps down for the lucky dog. And even if they get the lucky dog, they'll still be laps down. That'd be they'll go two to one down. 
Yeah. Or no, they are three down. Wait, my my yeah, apologies. Yeah, French yep. is three down. Okay. Bowman's three down. So they'll Gibeon go from three to two. out of this race. Yeah, and Bowers, I mean, he's just hoping maybe he picks up one more spot. Maybe from Demian. Maybe De Leon. He's still on pit road. So maybe he picks up one or two more. But at best, it's looking like a 24th place finish for Bowers tonight. Max, can you confirm or deny? But you feel like a chicken tender kind of guy. I love chicken tenders. What, what's the best dipping sauce? Barbecue. I think we agree is actually kind of surprising. It is surprising. I never was... Alright, so here's the thing. Honey mustard is not disgusting. Like, like I know I'm pretty picky, but honey mustard's not, like, bad. It's just not preferable to barbecue or ketchup for me. I can tolerate honey mustard. I'll give you that much. Now, if I could get, like, a sweet heat kind of barbecue... you right. Barbecue. Ranch is okay. Like, ranch is fine. I never understood the appeal of putting it on pizza, though. It's a little weird, but, yeah. And, like, that was all I saw in middle school was pizza day, and people would put ranch dressing on it. It was weird. Never understood it. Acquired tastes. I guess. My wife likes sour cream and popcorn. It's just... What? Yeah. Yeah. Back for the restart, though. Lap 138. And Nick Miller's going to be aggressive here into turn number one. Thomas Green gives him plenty of room. He's got more to lose oh. than Nick Miller does. I am just watching how close fillers. Oh, fillers just ships. And around he goes. Okay, fillers. Oh, and just a slight kiss from French. <laughs> William Bowman says hello. <laughs> so there, there's payback. But what I don't understand, and or I think you'll agree with this, why do it with 60 laps left, and. Sartage is still on the lead lap. He's going to get back to fillers. He, he doesn't even have any damage. Like, like he, he just have a little bit. Just take a set of tires and you're good. So that's what happened there. That was 100% payback. Uh, I'm going to say not executed well. No. Like, not, not at, at all. all. Like, like it's, it's, too, it's too early. Uh, didn't do enough. Like... <laughs> if you're going to if you're gonna get him back, make sure he can't get you back a second time. Or maybe in a... Technically, they're even, but I doubt either of them see it like that. So uh, it'll just continue on and continue on and continue on. So, um, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a busy race review for the admin team, and it's busy enough for Corbin Sibbins. I think it's pretty easy. Corbin Sibbins, race control. How you doing, bud? This ain't fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Back to the grind. <laughs> Don't give him time. I just need to hear the pain in his voice, and then he can get back out of here. It was definitely a product of, I don't care what you have to say. But uh, Kate McClenney and Nick Miller won two here. This will be interesting on the restart um, for five laps. They were both 1-2 on speed at the All-Star race with the short track. Ranch, barbecue, and honey mustard at the same time? I, I don't know how that would go, honestly. Probably pretty good. Hmm. I'm a fan of... Uh, Mayonnaise and ketchup, a goaded combination? That's disgusting. Uh-oh. How can I not remember the name of the sauce? <laughs> this is actually incredibly true. Where's the sauce? It's, it's, under the sauce. The, it's under the sauce. For all his heartache earlier in the race, Casey Brown's inside the top 15, so I'll give him his due. Probably got some post-race penalties coming his way, but, uh... Cheese sauce? i am be honest, like, if you put a, like, a cup of, like, Taco Bell the nacho cheese sauce in front of me, it would be better than anything in the world. <laughs> I am a fiend, alright? Like, <laughs> Taco Bell's nacho cheese sauce, I am a, like... Oh. You would... You offer me Taco Bell and I'll love you forever. I am an easy Of person. course Corbin sponsors the race where everyone's <laughs> going to wreck. What an awful decision. Why does he do this? Like, what did he expect? Probably this. Like, why put your why put our name on this? I mean, we were already our name was already on it because we're the broadcasting it, but like, don't mind the media two hundred. But it's a weird it's a weird thing to sponsor though. It's like, hey, what you're on YJ Media for the YJ Media two hundred? Check out YJ Media. Like Corbin, 
anything else. Honestly, I think it was just an excuse to you know, give money. He did. He did donate to charity though, so that's the good. That's the big purpose behind it all. But the naming could have been better. And y'all should also give money to charity. Restart here. Okay. Oh, Nick Miller gonna challenge him down into one. He got a great restart. Oh, that's tight. He gonna. He's there. He is there. Contact. Here comes Thomas Green. Oh, there no. goes Nick Miller. There goes Thomas Green. Chaos at the front of the field. Everybody piles in. They're still wrecking. That was not nice. And that might be Thomas Green's toe link. And that was everybody. <laughs> Tempers are blaring. A yep. So I knew right from the rip. Oh, that's probably Thomas Green done. Yeah, that's not good. It oh, Felvich getting back up to speed, clips him again, and I mean, my goodness. And he just got to sit there and wait, and I mean, that is. And it looks okay-ish for the 13. But uh, yeah, let's take another look here. This starts literally from the restart. So Cape is trying to play a little bit of mind games. He, he's, I don't even think he like, I, I'm not, I don't know if it's necessarily, I don't think he slows down, but it's fillers closing up that kind of makes it look like it's kind of an optical illusion, but he is just trying to catch him off guard. He's trying to make him. The objective is to get Nick Miller to kind of check up a little bit and then him take off. And he does get clear. Nick Miller gets into him there, gives him another bump. Then they're stuck inside of each other, and then Nick Miller loses the car. And there, they take your pick, right? I mean. I mean. <laughs> Was Brian Vickers that bad? At that one Martinsville race? Yes, I know exactly what he's talking about. And then I think somebody just literally punted him out of the race on purpose just to get him off the track. Let's take a look on board here. Uh, ooh, that's just rough for, for a lot of people. He does get there, gives him one bump, and then just kind of forces the issue there, and, and then he just loses it. And <laughs> it all breaks loose. It is foobar, it is, yeah. It is snafu, it is all that fun stuff. And just short track racing. Yeah. And after all of this, Kyle Ritchie has returned to the top of the leaderboards. The pole sitter finally back in first after an extended absence. And by the time we looked at all that wrecking, we're getting ready to re rack them. It was very aggressive. I mean, there was still time to make that move. And it was a, a non-playoff driver and a next-up driver, so two guys that had nothing to lose. So it just kind of... It is what it is at that point. Kyle Ritchie. He's been nailing the restarts. He does so again. Talmadge actually gets a great jump, and that'll put them side-by-side side for second. Or three wide middle of the pack. The 59 is Scarebo. Contact with Devin Galvin. And there goes the 59. Around. There Nick goes Miller's Nick around. Miller. Oh, oh, I, oh. oh okay. No, he just, I think he just takes him out. I, probably, <laughs> but. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's not a lot that he could do, honestly. Let's see here. I, I just think he made sure to not give him any room. Yeah, I mean, he just said, I'm going to, you're not getting out of here. And then, <laughs> the, Yeah. But uh, he just kind of drifts up, and Nick Miller's trying to avoid the chaos, and he's like, nope, I'm here. I'm not backing out of it, and around he goes. So instant karma, the 15, tries to avoid the wreck. And, uh, my goodness. <laughs> we're just going to laugh through the pain, that's all. 
They go back to an intermediate next week. Next week we'll be back to normally. Oh, so Tendled actually. Regularly scheduled good racing. But uh, yeah, so Tendled actually punts the 15 here. They just He didn't check up in time. It is what it is. Yeah, uh, it's uh, <laughs> and then I just want to see here Scarebo, nothing he could have done. Um, they're just beating and banging off the restart. It doesn't look like Scarebo got the best restart. Yeah, he's Sartage. Oh, and Galvin just beating it. They're all beating and banging. Does the 95 come back at him? Does he think that's a... Because the 95 takes a late left, like at the very last second, kind of, and then the 59 is starting to arc out. But, mm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, that one Vickers race from years ago. Yeah, I thought the 95, it looked a little bit weird there. On a closer inspection, the 95 kind of hooks a left there. Um, but that one Vicar, I forget, it was, it might have been the fall of Martinsville race from years ago. And, uh, it was certainly a Vickers moment if I've ever seen one. The 21 of Sam Demien cleared from the infield care center, doing it for the team. There you go. Somebody has to do it. But, uh, we're inside of 50 to go. And, uh... Yeah, that was a heck of a race, that fall 2011 one. I forget, somebody just eventually takes them out. They just were like, I'm, I'm doing it for the field, and they junked him. Can't believe broadcasters are having their messages deleted from the chat. <laughs> uh. How dare I ask them in not-so-nice words to stop wrecking Oh, Zach Range's chat was also disabled. Oh, so. Yeah. That will be it. Uh, I am glad we're just the broadcasters and not the, the race control or the, the admin team. Oh, if I was, people would definitely hate me after <laughs> tonight. Kyle Ritchie, another great restart. They, they didn't actually time that well, considering they had three cars on the inside there. 19 cars on the lead lap. Nick Miller still on the lead lap. Cade McClenney still on the lead lap. Thomas Green back down to 21st. He's battling for the lucky dog with Tenold. And uh, he'll have to get that back here soon. I feel like now that we're uh, almost, what, 40 to go now? Things yeah. are going to start heating up. Oh, there's Alex Chira. What happened to Richie? He suddenly lost a lot of pace. And where did that damage come from on the 76 as well? The 9 to the lead for the first time today. He gets a bonus point. He's got clean air. Can he make it count? Sartage man up to 6. Zach Range back inside the top 10. We're going around. Can they all save it? They're beating and banging. 3 wide. Casey Brown and Bowers getting a shot. 3 wide up into Tenold. <laughs> They're still beating and banging. They all save it. Nick Miller almost... Get spun by the 15 machine. And there goes Devin Galvin. And there oh, goes Galroy. Galroy Galvin's out. <laughs> and that was Devin Galvin jumping to pit road. Pin what happened to Pinder? Wait, what happened to Pinder? Oh. He wrecked what? No, he he Well, that's the slowest spin. That is so slow. And then, uh, yeah, let's take a look here. Devin Galvin, far too much speed in the corner, into the wall. <laughs> comes McElroy. What happened there? Oh, man. <laughs> that was, uh... My goodness. He just, he locks it up, carried too much speed, doesn't turn, doesn't turn. <laughs> Um, so I think that gives Tenold the lucky dog. It does, and that will put Thomas Green all by himself on the one lap down train. So 
not out of it for fans of the 13. I can't wait to figure out how many cautions were actually in this. Yeah. So, we're back. 163. 18 cars on the lead lap. I think this is going to be a record number it of is, cautions. It is. It is something else. And we got some comers and goers. Alex Cheer looking for his first win of the season. Jarrett Talmadge, looking for his first win of the season. Kyle Ritchie, he was dominating. He's got some heavy front end damage there. I don't know where that came from. Probably just back in the pack before he could get back up here. He's got some, a shot on the bumper as well. Looking for his second win. Dolly looking for his first win. McClenny looking for his second. Failvich for his second. So on and so forth. And Bowers, he does get another spot. He picks up the one from the Mien. He is a lap behind Travis DeLeon, but he is on track. So I, I said best case scenario would be 24th, and he is very close to getting that. It should be one to go this time. And it is. And I will take the bottom. So he's going to try and time this, I imagine, with the 76. Eighteen cars on the lead lap. McElroy did go a lap down in the course of that caution, so he'll be fighting Thomas Green for the lucky dog. Pace car is off. Alex Cheer enters the Geico Restart Zone, and we're back underway. <laughs> what a great jump. I mean, it's probably for the best. Just get away from... Oh, and the 74 is going to go around. Dolly, is he able to get and it? And he back up into traffic into Casey Brown. Caution, Caution is out. Does Thomas Green get a piece? That's the important thing. Oh, what? that's so close. Because he can't even get a 0x. And... Actually, that's the most... That was the... Uh... That was the sec last caution, actually. So we were on, it was a caution to go. Does he get touched? Oh! Oh, I think he does. I think he got hit there. Because he is not going around the field. And I don't think he'll be too happy with that one. Let's see here. The five gets a shot, and he just keeps coming down. And you can see the wiggle there. Uh, but what happens to Dolly to bring out this caution? He kind of gets pinballed around, and... He does not get a great start. He's kind of forcing it, and he gets kind of just stuck. He almost gets hit by the 88. He takes evasive action, but then Sartaj is already there, sticking his nose in, gets him around. And he gets hit from the 58 back up into the field. See, so yeah, feels not a concern for anybody with the amount of cautions that we've had. Dolly should get waved around the pace car next time by. 
and it was McElroy, I think, that gets the lucky dog after all of that. But now Dolly is ahead of Thomas Green. Or yeah, Dolly will get waved back around, so it doesn't really matter. And then Casey Brown, I think, is a lap behind Thomas Green. Wally's the best part of this stream right now. Hello, Wally. How you doing, puppy? Still can't believe you don't call that dog and Wallard. We do call him Wallard. Wallard. Indeed we do. Right to on top of the pace car, there goes Dolly by. Gilroy does beat the pace car out. 18 cars in the lead lap. One car, one lap down, and then so on and so forth. With... 30 laps to go. It is well and truly anyone's ball game. Brandon French still has a shot. <laughs> yes, he does. Not a great one, but a shot. And if you're Thomas Green, just get out of the way. Like, just fall back behind everybody, and what in the world happened there? With Ryan Tiller. And he's still going around. I mean, it. not a caution. I mean, the right front is destroyed. As is the left front. He just, he misses the shift or something. Oh, and Sartage is around. They're gathering it up, gathering it up. Yellow's back out as Failvich has had an issue as well. Hey, we got the two best friends right near each other, too. I'll just restart. Oh, and yeah, Failvich was trying to just get to the bottom. Schwartz into Sartage. Very late on the brakes into his left rear. And then around he goes. Oh, and failed, but she made it through and then lost it again. Oh. Yeah, so he gets through. He, not able to check up, uh, but he gets on the curb, and around we go. Um, I have found out what happened to Ryan Tiller. Yeah. Go ahead and hit me with it. Uh, on that restart, uh, Nick Miller, you know, gets us up. I don't want to say he jumped it, but a better start than Tiller does. Uh, tries to get on the inside of Tiller, collects his left rear, gets him in the wall. Yeah, I don't know. Then, like, I don't know. Corner. I don't know if he like jumps it though. I don't. I don't think he jumped it. I, that's why I didn't say like he, he. Yeah, he definitely didn't jump it. Jeez, that's just a bad restart. No, that's just a. Does he get it? I'm trying to see. Does he shift early? Like, let's go on board here. It was a little, it was a tiny bit late. Like the initial reaction was late. And it was a tiny bit late from first to second and second to third. At that point, the left front is broken. And then both left front and right front destroyed. I know his chat was disabled. Nick Miller's chat was disabled. Yeah, because I mean... Yeah, because it's a bad restart. Nick Miller's trying to get around him, but it's just misjudged. I think there's a... I mean, it's not real. He really doesn't... Uh... I don't know if he even blocks, per se. I don't really think that he does. Just watch this. I think Miller just misjudges it. Yeah, because, I mean, he doesn't really come down that much, and the amount that he did come down um, wasn't enough to, like, put himself on the bumper. Nick Miller just didn't go down far enough, I think, and then he's just trying to get past him, trying to get past him, and... Yeah, then he finishes him off, so that, that one, no doubt about that. We, we really don't know where the 19 was going. Um... I don't know. I, I don't think Velvich did anything wrong, unfortunately. He's been pretty clean most of the year. Yeah, that wasn't anything he could have done there when he gets onto the curb, so. Yeah, I don't think Velvich just a product of circumstance there. But, uh, 23 to go. And Thomas Green still does not get the lucky dog. 
I, I don't know what happened there, but he didn't get it again. Um, so yeah, he's just trying to, I mean, he's trying to pick up spots. And he's just not able to. So I think if you're, you just got to get out of the way and let them wreck it up, because they're going to. Uh, at this point, Bowers actually gets to 23rd. He gets around Devin Galvin and Travis DeLeon. Um, and we're back underway. I was saying Dylan ate too much candy. And there goes Chris Pinder around. Yellow's back out again. Does Thomas Green just just come to a dead stop? I'm rooting for you. It's been three cautions now. <laughs> I really am. Let's take a look. I just want to see this. This is the battle we've been watching. Yeah, he's not near anybody. Bauer just says go on by. And we're wrecking instantly. And finally Thomas Green will have a, a shot to get back in. And this is absolutely crucial for his playoffs because he was up there with Bowers and, and Fillers. He's been down in the 20s for so long, and now he's back into the fight, and he's he's got a clean car. He's going to have a chance to pick up spots, but what happens? This is the question we want to know for the 20th time. What happened? <laughs> and it looks like the 19 again. So the beginning of the race was the 5. The end of the race is going to be the 19 here getting involved in a lot of incidents and let's see here does pinder let's just take a look at it 10 old i thought was going to get into him doesn't and i don't it's just i don't know dolly involved failvich involved again guys just dropping by the way low a side <laughs> I just, I, i'm trying to just look at this just let's see here it really feels like Nick Miller is just driving with desperation right now. Yeah, I mean, he's just Please. there. I mean, I, I don't know. You're three wide at Martinsville. It is what it is at that point. Hmm. Like, he's trying really hard to get to the front, and it's just not working out for him. All respect has kind of gone out the window. So. It is what it is. Who can hold on, though? I mean, the TTSL boys looking pretty good. You got first and, and fourth. Jarrett Talmadge and Thomas Green back on the lead lap. Cade McClenney kind of doing his own thing as the next up driver. I, I like Ryan Tiller trying to be like, I'm free for an interview. No. There's no infield care center here. We know you're fine. You're just yeah. angry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. We might just interview the winner and get out of here. We're going to let the drivers deal with their, their beef in their own way. Um. Because there's some unhappy drivers. We don't, I don't need to, like, go through and edit another interview out of a clip. Or no, out of a race don't. again, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, we'll interview the top three, maybe just the winner. <laughs> Let's see who the top three are. Um, we're not trying to get caught up in the moment. <laughs> it's like, if it's Nick Miller, I'm not doing it. Um... There are stories to be told, absolutely, but uh, at a certain point, you know, you get, there's got to be a level of respect at some point, and that's kind of gone out the window tonight, and you, you really can't have that, unfortunately. I mean, I mean you can have it, but I don't, I don't need to hear about it. You, you, go, you go right to their DMs, and you complain that you got wrecked at Martinsville. But that's I was going to say, the stories happening here are like... Everybody is mad. WWE type Everybody is mad. 16 cars on the lead lap. Dolly, the first car, one lap down. Nick Miller, I think, is finally out of contention. He's on pit road. He was disqualified? Oh, my. What? What? That is a first. That is special, all right? Like, he's a great driver. Like, in mentality, a little questionable. A little aggressive at times, but, yeah. You know. But I don't, how do you become the first person to get dis... Well, I don't know if he's the first person. Oh, we're around in the back. It's Dolly. Yellow is out. <laughs> and he was the lucky dog, and not anymore. <laughs> William Bowman and French right ahead of this. Thomas Green trying to get... It's just too much speed. It's just too much. Wait, was Nick Miller stopped on track? Was that why he was removed? Uh, I don't know. 
We'll go back and find out, I guess. Oh, I think he wrecked under caution. Oh. Ah, so he well, gets into Pinder, he... and they had some beef back from way early in the year. What? That actually was I... not it at all. Uh, I okay. Like, I guess the mentality thing was different. I thought I thought he did something. Like, I, like I, because I'm about to say he comes out with Pinder, and that was that was the most recent caution. But I don't know what that was all about. And he toes me. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he was done either way with that damage. It doesn't really matter at that point. So it literally doesn't matter. Oh, and that was as the leaders were coming around. I see the timing of that. I I understand now. That was as the leaders were coming to green. He does tow immediately, but like I said, there's really I don't I don't know. Um. So William Bowman gets a lap back. We're coming to ten laps to go. Martinsville. Martinsville. <laughs> it is what it is. I'm going to just say your statement uh, on Discord in a private DM is uncalled for. But it was funny. Was it no wrong? What it's about. No. <laughs> yeah. So Bowers, I said... Pocono type oh, vibes. Yeah. So Bowers is up to 23rd. He's just slowly picking up spots. He'll get another one with Nick Miller. I think, just barely. And I think he'll... Yeah, he'll pick up one on Tiller. So he's 20 seconds, so he's... I mean, it's not great. But he did have a five-point cushion in every spot. I mean, it keeps him in the hunt, is what it does. Um... Well, we got a front row that hasn't won a race. Kay McClenney, nothing to lose. Kyle Ritchie with one win. Shorts. I mean, who's going to take this thing? A couple of the usual suspects not in the running. The Nines had a good year. The 91 has as well, but they haven't broken through to victory lane yet. This would be the time to do so with three races left. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't matter at this point. Just run it out. Please no overtime. Please no oh, overtime. Boy. Why are we we're, stopping? We're, we're coming to nine laps to go. Alex Chira enters the Geico restart zone. Back underway. Single digit laps remaining. Dolly again, one lap down. Sixteen cars in the lead lap. And look for someone like Thomas Green to be aggressive. Failvich to try and recover his race if he's got anything left in that car. Oh, Tennant's around. So we gather it up. He's on the bottom. Yep. We'll go drop down to 16th. Take a quick look at what happened. So he heads we off. got. Sorry, Sartage man, James Fillers. Less than 10 laps to go. Oh, and he started getting loose right in front of Thomas Green, and that was it. The 91's going to have to do some blocking here. Kay McClenney probably has been the quickest of anybody. Hasn't really had the, the clean air to show it most of the night. He's got some damage on the front of that car. Can Alex Cheerer break through the 91 under massive pressure? He's scraping the wall on the entry to turn number one. 91 not pulling away, though, despite this fierce battle for second. A bump. There through three. A warning shot, perhaps. Does the 91 have anything for Chira? Yes, he does. He's going to take a peek. He's going to open the door for McClenny around the outside. We're coming to four laps to go. Side by side for second. Power move around the outside for the 05. French with a jump scare there. Down on the bottom of the track. 
McClenney not able to clear just yet. But can he go around the outside of the nine? He is there. Coming to three laps to go. He's in the wall. He'll fall back and re-rack. And... That's a lockup. Big lockup for the nine. Cave McClenney through to the lead. Jarrett Talmadge through to second. The 91 gets cleared. Does the 91 have everything? He's in playoff contention. Cave McClenney is not. What do we see here? I mean, if you can get to his back bumper, you got to move him, especially if it's the last lap. Coming to two to go. What kind of send do we see? Top five. All the way back to Randy. All single file. But it is Cade McClenney. Oh, there's two Vander laps Brown. to go. Caution is out. And caution is out. Hold the phone. Should put Dolly back on the lead lap and... Gives everyone else a shot at it. It's not necessarily the worst thing for Cade McClain. Where's Philly Bean? I got complaints. <laughs> oh my. So, necessarily not the worst thing for McClain. We've seen the leader on pretty much every restart minus one. And you know the one I'm talking about, Nick Miller and Cade McClain. Or the whole field wrecked. But the leader on every other restart has absolutely far and away dominated the start. And they've gotten out to a two or three car length lead and Talmadge is going to have to try and time it perfectly if he wants a shot at it. And Dolly back on the lead lap. It'll be 17 cars on the lead lap. I'm just saying, it's one of three. Yep. Maybe they've got to make it around you know, twice, or well, at least once. And one lap. It takes 20 seconds to get around. 20 seconds is a long time here. It is a long time. Been here for over two hours. <laughs> it's been a long race. The patience is pretty much gone from everybody. Bowers at the 21st. He does pick off Nick Miller. And that's where he will stay. I'm pretty sure that the top five is probably of the group of the most calm drivers. Like, Talmadge hasn't been involved in a lot. Nope. Chira hasn't been involved in a lot. Nope. Cave has, but he is a little more level-headed. Yep. Uh, Schwartz hasn't. Kyle Ritchie hasn't. I mean, hey, it's Fillers, fillers and Sartage Man on the restart, so hold your hats, folks. So... <laughs> Let's just recap this. 17 cars on the lead lap. William Bowman, first car is lap down. He's all by himself, then back to French. He's on his own lap. Casey Brown on his own lap. Brandon Bowers on his own lap. Travis DeLeon still running. He's trying to catch Nick Miller. And then out of the race, Ryan Tiller, Devin Galvin, Samuel Demien, Justin Johnson, and Joshua Parent. And Nick Miller, obviously, as well. I, I gotta assume by now that, you know, Jimmy Filler, Sartosh Man, they've seen what's going on around them, and they're like, you know what? We were a little dumb early on. We've learned. It's like a coming of age story. They're not gonna wreck each other, right? They're not. Right? right? I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're sixth and seventh. You have, a, you have a chance at a top five and some solid points. You know, Bowers is down in 21st. You're all going to gain. Fillers is looking to be, you know, potentially the new points leader. So I don't, I just don't know. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. We're coming to the green flag. Can we do it in one? one we got three attempts. First attempt right here. Do they all play nice? The 05 takes the bottom. What does Chira do? He's going to have the best opportunity here, maybe. Back underway. He gets a good jump. Talmadge will have a shot to dive underneath him. Maybe not quite. All good on the start. Talmadge gets clear for second, but he's three car lengths back. He's going to aggressively dive it in. Chira, contact with the 58. They get back to the white. Race is official. Schwartz aggressive for third. Talmadge is right there. He's looking for his first win. He's got a good corner here. 
What does he do down into turn number three for the final time? And it's aggressive, oh, wow. but not enough. Cade McClenney picks up his second win of the season in a wild Martinsville race. And fitting enough, they oh. wreck across oh. the line. Failvich isn't even going to get across. Chad Adams not going to get across. They're fighting for every drivers. possible point. They're actually crossing the line backwards. Chad Adams made a pass driving backwards. Michael McElroy picks up his second top 10 of the season. Zach Range, a great finish. And what in the world happened at the checkers? Oh, Pender just loops it, too. Pender, why you gotta do that to Scarabo? It catches, yeah. But what happens on the front stretch? And it's Randy Arms. Trying to power it up. He's underneath fillers. And let's just watch this real quick. They're all beating and banging. And then Randy snaps into fillers, and there you go. Ten old nails Randy across the line. And I mean, my goodness. Chad Adams does pass somebody backwards, and Scarebo trying to... What in the world? Holy cow, what a race. That is a race. So we doing... We'll do top, top three, three and uh, we will, we'll make it a, a night. You can... I'll, I'll tell everybody after we're done. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get... Uh, My race winner. Here with Cabe McClenney. Started dead last. Went last to first. And uh, just what did, what did you see out there coming to the, the kind of final couple of starts and, and how did you manage to work your way through all the chaos tonight yeah i knew i just had to be patient with it i knew uh after we got in wreck twice and started at the back i could make my way through uh the field i just needed to get there once i got to third fourth uh i just had to have patience with it i knew Jarrett and uh, alex were going to be damn quick so i kept restarting on the bottom kyle kept or uh, alex kept picking the top so i just was patient with it once it went green i was quick so we were down on power had probably three minutes of damage at the end, four maybe, and driven through the field twice. I don't know. That was, I'm proud of that one. Yeah, what a way to double your win count on the season. Um, and yeah, it was. Uh, you were involved in the the biggest wreck of the night, um, mm -hmm. and able to fight back from that. And you started literally dead last, last the EOLers. Um, and it's just just a wild one, Martinsville, and the tempers were very obviously short. Uh, patience was short for a lot of people, and uh, you're out here. I mean, it's kind of probably pressure was off. You know, you're not racing for points in this series. You're just out here trying to get wins, and that's exactly what you did. Well, I I put a lot of pressure on myself this one because as much as I love Martinsville, this is my favorite track. I messaged you and said middle of the week, just be if when you do your picks, pick me because I'm gonna true. win this sucker. And I gave it to Art too. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if you can put it on the screen, but. I messaged you guys middle of the week. I'm like, I'm going for this one. I wanted this one more than any race at Martinsville I probably ever gotten. So that was, uh, I, I earned that one. I will say that that was I wanted that one the most out of any race I ran. Absolutely, you got it done. It took one small lockup from the nine machine, and you blew pie on the inside, and you were able to hold off on a green white checker to pick up win number two on the season. Yes, sir. I mean. I knew if I can kind of stick with Alex, I could just apply the pressure, and he ended up locking up, so I was kind of lucky on that. But, um, yeah, just thank you, uh, Doug Ezel, for spotting. Nick, Zach, Chad, for all kind of watching. I think half the house is watching. My girlfriend, <laughs> Kale's girlfriend, my buddy Seth Wise, my parents, Kale, my brother, everybody was watching. And uh, when they came in after I crossed the line, they were all coming and yelling, but that was cool. So thanks to them for watching, um, and uh, thank you, Nick Miller. <laughs> absolutely well congratulations on the win and we'll see you next week uh, i think we're we uh, charlotte i think homestead's the finale yep. all right we'll see you next week in charlotte yep see you guys yep. here with Jarrett talmage and oh so close yet again uh but you started in the third position you had speed all night uh your team was doing well um and just want to firstly say uh well done for being respectful on the last restart you easily could have plowed through them uh, he's not racing for points, and you are, but you kept it respectful and clean, and uh, the finish you we can be proud of, but 
the 205 laps to get there. A little rough and patience was short. It's just typical Martinsville. Uh, times 10, I would, I guess, tonight. Uh, yeah, um, I definitely crossed my mind about moving them, but I, I don't want to race like that. Um, I don't know. I guess, honestly, I'd take a second, although I would have liked to win, you know, with him not racing for points. Um, but it's good points for us to try and hopefully get back in the championship pot. And I think we were 24 out entering today, and I think a lot of the other championship competitors had a bunch of issues. So um, pretty good day. Yeah, absolutely. You'll be right up in there when we head to Charlotte next week. And uh, you definitely closed the gap with two races remaining. You are squarely in the mix, and I'm excited to see how it plays out. Yeah, uh, so I uh, had a rough first two races. Uh, not much went my way, and uh, it's nice to have a good one. at a, I don't consider short tracks to be one of my better things, but uh, I guess just kept it clean and out of trouble. And, uh, yeah, sometimes that you get rewarded for that. Absolutely. Well, congratulations on the solid effort, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week at Charlotte. Thank you. And here with our third place finisher, Jonathan Schwartz. We see him all the time on Tuesday nights in the podium, and tonight was, I believe, his first podium in the Next Gen Series. And uh, you had to earn that one the hard way, uh, just like everyone else out there. It was beaten and banging, pure chaos. You had to start from the back and got wrecked a couple times, so you came from the back several times, and uh, you're able to, to kind of race it out there for for top three in, on the final couple restarts. Yeah, I mean, nothing's like a little bit of attrition, right? So, uh, <laughs> I mean, after after showing up for practice, I didn't. I was, I think, I was like fifteenth fastest, so it was pretty rough. But I made it through, kept the car clean, and uh, came home with a top five. So I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, definitely. Glad to see you in the next gen series. Obviously, now you've been doing some work down on Wednesday nights in the next step, and uh, glad to see you up here duking it out. Uh, we know you got the speed and. Uh, Kind of just the the awareness to keep the car clean when uh, when everything is kind of chaotic all around you. So it was on display here tonight. Yeah, I'll definitely be uh, here for the show next season. So uh, these boys better be ready. It's gonna be a fight. <laughs> Absolutely. We're well, looking forward to it. Congratulations on a on a good finish, and look forward to seeing you next week. Hopefully. All right. Thanks. Yep. And uh, yeah, four caution. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, four <laughs> cautions. A hundred and twenty <laughs> caution laps out of what was two hundred and six in the end. There you go. Um, so that was a Martinsville race on iRacing. Typical. Like I said, head over to backmarkershop.com. You're going to see some T-shirts that will absolutely sum up this race beautifully. Um, we're going to let the beef play out, and everybody DM each other furiously. Um, and we'll just kind of administrative decision. Um, we'll, we'll let the drivers know. Um, but yeah, we will hopefully be back next week for. Well, we will be back next week. Hopefully, the the clean racing will return next week at Charlotte. Two races left in the championship. Uh, be sure to stay tuned to our socials, ARS socials, and the back marker socials for all the late breaking news. And uh, looking forward. To seeing everyone back here next Monday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the second-to-last race in the season. Y'all take care. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Monday.